G'day, welcome. I'm Stephen Travers. Well, how's your week of drawing been? As I was just getting the last things ready, I was thinking, gosh, what have I done in the last week? Has it been a good week for drawing or not so good week for drawing? Um, if you've watched all my videos, you've seen all my drawings. But um, it was an interesting week for drawing because I drew in some ways two extremes of a subject. And it's just interesting to see the ability to represent two very different things that are basically the same in one way and very different in another way. Hi, Jessica. In another way, uh, using ink line. And I think it was particularly interesting to reflect on because of tonight's topic, which is 10 tips if, if, if you're going to um, switch or be switching or are switching from pencil to pen. Not that, of course, this has to be a one-way street. Any day we can draw in anything we like. But if you're perhaps like many people, when we start to draw, we start to draw predominantly with pencil and quite possibly because that's at school where we start. And pen is often something we switch to later on. And similarly, my, my early drawing experience uh, as an adult, like in my recent life when I began art again at 50, um, was with pencil. Um, sorry, me too. <laughs> you seem to have this. Maybe it just takes a while for your computer to get the sound. Hi, Strawberry. But, um, but yeah, it was. Uh, let me show you the two drawings um, because we are looking at, at line. One of them was this was this house. Hi, Louise. One of them was this house, uh, an old farmhouse, derelict farmhouse. Uh, not uh, it wasn't a farmhouse. It was an inn, a derelict inn, about 170 years old. And so it's run down. I was trying to capture the run down look. And with the same pen, though, I drew the Berlin Cathedral in Berlin and was out for a very different effect using the pen, out for a grand neoclassical impressive structure, something to something that was built to say, you know, we are powerful, I suspect. And yet it was the same, the same uh, medium, the same pen, in fact, that drew them both. So pens are great a great medium to have but it's it's interesting that we often start with pencil and because my transition if you like or my changing from drawing in pen exclusively a uh, drawing in pencil exclusively to drawing in ink is still fairly recent i have just recently uh, been um been reflecting on the differences and i thought i would just share some of some of that Sometimes I, I think, oh, well, I do a pencil drawing just for a change today. I, I, I haven't yet, but uh, may, maybe I will. Ah, oh, good day, Yana. Uh, cold, windy. Oh, yes. We, we had a nice tree. <laughs> so, yes. Yes, I actually took the photo of that palm tree, those palm trees in today's video. I, um, I took the photos of that, those palm trees in winter. So that's what a Sydney winter looks like. Okay. So in this in this live session, we're looking at if if we're drawing in pencil and we're thinking of drawing in pen or we're, we've started drawing in pen, my 10 tips to help that process go along as easily as possible. So look, the first um, the first tip is one that I've a point that I've made in a few videos. So you might have heard it, but it's that. Going from pencil to pen is not some sort of transition. It's not like learning to ride a bike with training wheels and then you take them off and you learn to ride the bike properly. Drawing in pencil isn't preparation, getting practice, learning the skills. So then learning to draw in pen is, is easier. It's not that at all. They're two totally different mediums, media. And, and so pencil has, has its skill sets for beginners and for the more intermediate users and for the advanced users, just as pen has its skill sets for beginner users, for more intermediate users and for 
advanced users. It's not that it's not as if drawing in pencil is a lesser or a junior or a more elementary way of drawing than pen. So I think that's an important an important consideration um, to have. They're two totally different things, and and graphite has a lot of wonderful possibilities. And as I've mentioned before, when I first started drawing again, really as an adult, it was graphite that it was pencil because I was in Paris and I wanted to draw something and I had a sketchbook and I had pencils and that's what we drew. And I must admit, I liked the security of being able to erase things, but it never occurred to me at that point to draw in pen because I'd never really drawn in pen in my life. So it was quite natural just to be drawing in pencil. And then when I came home and I was still wanting to draw Paris, and so I was drawing from my photos, I then began to develop with the consistent, probably almost daily drawing of drawing quite detailed work. So I developed certain techniques with my line work. And if you want to have a look at these things, you have to go back to the very start of my Instagram channel well not the very start the very start there are my oil paintings but of, of Australian native flora flora but um but um soon after that you'll see my pencil drawings and it's not dissimilar in some ways but it's very dissimilar in other ways to my my pen work so so yeah I think I had and and I certainly did hundreds of drawings in pencil so that that was that was interesting, but then I I switched to pen um, because I was getting ready for my often mentioned cancelled um, COVID cancelled trip to Europe three months in Europe in 2020, and I was wanting to play around with watercolor, and because I used to erase so much with the pencil, the paper would often get dirty and smudgy and. And I was thinking that the watercolour wouldn't necessarily take well to going over erased, heavy, heavily erased paper and it would show and all that. So I thought, well, if I could just draw more accurately in pen, then that would be a, a safer foundation to put the watercolour on. And I was afraid, I think, as well, that the, the pencil would smudge and, and such. So so I switched to, I switched to um, pen. And... Interestingly, because I was a bit short of subject material at this stage, a lot of the drawings that I did that I did in pencil, I used the same reference to to reproduce uh, to, to to draw to draw redraw in pen, and it's really interesting comparing the effect of the two. If you look at the thumbnail for today, I just for this video, I just quickly grabbed two of two of them and. Um, Put them together, sort of a 50-50 of the one scene made them the same size. So half of it's in pencil and half of it is in pen. It is very interesting to see the different effect that we could get with the other. But as I was saying, I think it's a it's a very unhelpful mindset to have to somehow be thinking that pencil is an easier medium and it's it, it's a good starting medium and that ink is a more difficult medium and it's it's what you move on to when you're more mature in your drawing. They're both totally different and it does a great injustice to each of them to think of them in those ways. And you could quite happily start and finish your entire drawing life just using one of those two mediums. So so that's the first point. Um it's 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 not it's not like a transition. It's, you don't sort of glide from one into the other, and because of that, that kind of leads into my second point: that expect to need a totally new way to draw. Expect that it's not going to be simply a case of I'm now holding a pen in my hand instead of a pencil. There is so much that is so different between using the two and and just the feel the sort of line that you can leave uh on the on the paper the marks that you can make and how you can make them um
yeah, and and particularly and particularly if if um uh if when you start drawing with pen, you're still wanting to use pencil for some sort of underdrawing, which is what I did with my first or my first big Instagram drawings. Um, they were done on a four by four grid on the reference on the paper and uh, with a pencil underdrawing, and then I would ink over the top of those. It's a very different experience with the, the ink. And therefore, if you then go to draw without the pencil underneath, it's it's a very different feel to do that. And and I'm I just I'm just looking down because I'm just not wanting to go into some of the other points in this point. So so we'll go on to the third point, which is that so so um, yeah, the second point, expect to have to develop over time, over practice, a different way of drawing, a different way of strategizing the drawing, um, particularly because, and the third point, third point is the obvious point, you can't erase with pen. But I think connected with that, I want to say, don't be scared of that. That's the thing that I think everyone gets fixated on when they're drawing with pencil but would like to for whatever reason explore drawing with pen it's the oh no I can't erase my mistakes and I think that's a big mistake to be thinking that way because as well as developing um, a new way of drawing quite likely we also need to develop a different mindset to mistakes that we don't have to develop when we can erase them easily enough when any line we make that we don't like, we can get rid of as soon as we like. Um, when we can't do that, what we learn, we learn a number of things. Firstly, we learn to draw, I think, more carefully because we have to. We learn to observe more carefully because we're forced to. We learn to consider where we're putting the, the line or the marks on the paper because we need to be more sure, more confident. And so we do build that confidence if we in a very intentional way, um, focus on it as we draw. Um, the other thing I think we learn to do is because we don't erase our mistakes, we develop a better attitude towards mistakes. Because we don't erase the mistakes, we have to live with them. And what that often means is we learn that they're not so bad. Now, sometimes they are bad, and in my experience, um, very rarely, they're bad enough that I'll start the drawing again. But they are invariably when they're amongst the first marks that I make. Hello, uh, Roxette in the Philippines. Glad you could join us. They're often the mistakes that I make at the very start when I've got nothing to reference off and I'm having to kind of work out that initial starting point from framing whatever and so I find then it's easier to get a line that's so far out that I think I am better off starting again but I've started maybe a dozen drawings again from the hundreds I've drawn for YouTube so it's not you know it's it's not such a big deal hi Amy it's not such a big deal. What I have to learn to do is that for most of the lines that aren't quite where I want them to be, I have to learn to look at it, to consider my options. And often my options are I can adjust that line slightly or I can look at what's going to happen in my drawing further ahead and I can see that there's a way in which I can, I can lessen the visual impact of that line. Sometimes it's just drawing another line on top of it. I have a drawing style where I often end up with a few lines for each line uh, and, and it just looks the same as any, any other any other part. So um, yeah, the, we learn a better attitude towards mistakes. And I think it's actually one of the really helpful things in drawing with ink is that we learn not to fixate on getting things wrong. We learn to we learn to consider the overall drawing. We, we learn to not just draw it line by line, line by line, but we can um, um, we can embrace the whole. 
and we can realize that the drawing's not finished and we can't judge it until we get to the end. Hello, Edith from Canada. Can our mood affect the drawings? I think certainly it can. Um, it, it certainly can. And if we're feeling rushed or pressured, that could certainly in some ways compromise um, what, what we draw. I think if we're feeling excited about a drawing, it certainly helps. I mean, I... I held up this one at the start of the the, the, the session, um, just when I was just chatting. I've, I've had this reference photo for a long time, and I've been wanting to draw it for a long time, but I knew it was going to take take me a couple of hours to draw, and I just didn't have that time in the day, day to kind of draw it and make the video as well. Um, but I've been really looking forward to drawing this. And when I had when I had a day where I thought, ah, oh, I can draw the Berlin Dom today, I've got time. To do that, I can fit that in. I was really looking forward to it, and I was really positive about it. And I feel like it's a happy drawing to look at. That that may sound a bit strange, but but um, I feel that the anticipation and the excitement that I had to draw it, um, and the fact that I could just get, go at the the speed I wanted shows. Um, I had another drawing that I did yesterday, um, day before yesterday. Uh, maybe I didn't draw yesterday, the day before yesterday, of uh, an Australian bush scene, some 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 two gum trees with a dark rock behind it. And and I'd also been wanting to draw that for a while. But when I began to draw it, I kind of, I wanted to fit it within a certain time limit. And at, at the end, it was pushing me. And I felt this tension. And I, I felt that... Um, um, I wasn't making some decisions about the sorts of marks I was making with as much thought as I wanted to. And that was frustrating me because I was happy with how the drawing had been progressing, but I felt like I I wasn't doing these last points, these end points where we kind of bring the final image out. And so they're really important, those people get caught up with the first things, but in some ways it's the last things that, that we the last marks that we put on the paper that create what people see and they're very important and often because they're not in some ways they're not the most significant parts of of the drawing because they're usually things that we've done at the start it's easy to think that they're not um they're not the um the most important things and yet yeah I think they're the things that we need to have real finesse about and real consideration about and know and and sort of I often talk about it's it's the start of the drawing it's a lot slower because we have nothing to reference off but we pick up speed there's a tempo there's a rhythm when we draw I do want to make a video actually on the tempo the rhythm of a drawing because well, I've never heard anyone else talk about it, but I find that with myself, there is this there is this regular rhythm that happens in my artwork. But just as just as at the start, it starts slowly, a very slow wind up and progresses, and it picks up speed. And generally, the second half of the drawing is a lot faster than the first half of the drawing. As you get towards the end, it's like the train slowing down to come into the station. And then it comes just to an absolute stop. And it's like those last few kind of marks that 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 we make on the paper. We, we put them on with more and more hesitancy, not wanting to go too far. And, um, and yeah, because it's ink, so if we go too far, we can't take it back. Um, Right. Uh, what's the expectations before a drawing, if you have an idea in a range of time, you sort of prepare yourself. Um, yeah, look, I, I think I think we've just moved a little off, off um, topic. So um, I'll just answer this question and then we'll come back on topic. Um, but I generally do have a time frame in my head, but that's really because, well, for two reasons. One is I, I do think it's a helpful thing to do, firstly, because how I draw partly depends on how much time I have to draw and what I have to do in that time. The, 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 the technique, the way I put the marks, the lines on the paper, it all relates to, to how much time I have to do it. 
if if I have if I have five minutes, then it's a different draw, drawing to if I have ten minutes to if I have twenty minutes. And I've got a few videos where I have the same scene, and I, there's one where I give myself five minutes, ten minutes, and then twenty minutes. And it's it's interesting to see the way the drawing changes. If I'd had an hour drawing as well for that, it would look very different. Um, yeah, and and again, because because I'm filming um, most of my drawings to make them into videos, there's just a limit to how long the video can be and there's a limit to how much I can speed it up and therefore there's a limit to the total time I can spend drawing. I find that two hours on one drawing is basically the most I can do to have a usable YouTube video um, from it. So, um, um yeah, yeah. But two hours, I think, is a long time for, for, for most drawings. I think it's I think it's really helpful to do a drawing in one sitting if you can. Now it's a bit different if it's a commission and it's a lot of detail and it's kind of like, yeah. But but I think when we're just doing drawings, we do get into a rhythm, we do get into a zone, we do get into um, a place of observation, I think, if we do it correct, where we absorb a lot of detail that we hold in our head, a lot of relevant detail that we hold in our head. And we also get our eye-hand coordination going. We, we, we learn particular things about the marks we make for this scene that we get a rhythm with. And, and if we break that, if there's then three days before I come back to finish it, well, I'm starting, I'm st starting cold. I, I've I've lost all the all the, the warm-up where I think my marks become more confident, they become more accurate, they become uh, they have they have greater feel. I always feel, I always feel the weakest marks in my drawing are the first ones I make. And if I finish a drawing in one session, it means I actually end with my best mark making. Now, what happens is that, is that yeah, if, if, if I do three quarters of the picture and then I come back the next day and, and start again or maybe three days later, then I'm starting with my weak lines again, the ones that normally are in a certain place of the picture where they end up being not so important. But now I'm doing these other marks where they, they are more important and, but they're weak you know, and, and I've also lost just lost the head space of where I was going. I find as I draw, I do make decisions and I often change what I was thinking to have, as to how the drawing was going to look. And I start to develop new thoughts. I see new possibilities in the drawing when I start to put the marks on the paper. I, I the, the, Yeah, I think, wow, I could do this or that or mm, I, I could change this or and all of these things. So I think it's I think it's much better to draw in one session in 40 seconds some of you are going to see some ads so um please let them stay if you're finding this helpful please hit the like button it makes a huge difference and also put a comment for me in the comment session because again it's it's a good measure of engagement and that's that's helpful for me but particularly if you're in the chat and i'm reading things here that doesn't mean you can't actually type a comment in into the um comment section as well Thank you. A few more, a few more likes just just appeared. So, thank you for that. All right. So we'll come back to um, moving from pencil to pen, and and look again. So, some of these sort of sound obvious when you say them, and they are obvious, but but they're considerations, and that's that when we draw with pencil, um, we with the, the the line um so i'm just making sure i don't okay so line um with 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 can't see the comment section i'm sorry alahan i think i think it is here um there's no smooth transition from from line to line it's 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 very black and white with with pencil, it's it's very sensitive to pressure 
and we can get great variation in our lines. We can go from black to gray to, to hello there, Tate, to, to almost nothing, to something that barely registers with the eye, with, with a, a nice flow of line. With ink, there's a line there or there's not, and it's black or it's not. And unless I have a range of pens and I've got some different grays of ink, we can't get a different value of, of, of our marks. It's the same value all over the place. So, so I think that's, that's and, and these are the things that require us to often develop a different way of thinking, a different way of visualising what we're trying to do and a different drawing style. And, and I, I, I guess I can keep coming back to that. That I think it's very helpful when, when we switch to drawing with pen, if we've been drawing with pencil, not to presume that we can just now do the same thing in pen. It just doesn't work out. We, what we need to do is leave behind the strengths of the graphite and embrace the strengths of ink. And, and trying to draw the same way will not let us do that. What do I prefer? Um, um, look, I was thinking, I was, I was asking that question um, myself um, beforehand. What, what do I prefer? Look, I, I guess the truth is I've stayed with the pen. I could have gone back to pencil. Um, um, so I, I do like the, the clean look of ink. Now, maybe if I went back to pencil, I would have a cleaner pencil line because I wouldn't I, I wouldn't need to erase because I, I, I can't erase now. So I've I, I forced myself to perhaps draw it in a way that where I don't make all those mistakes. Um, and where I do take a little more time and, and, and care. And so maybe that would give me a cleaner look with my 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 pencil work. Um, and I do miss I do miss the ability to get all these lovely tonal variations with with pencil. I do miss that. Som sometimes the the nice clean look of black and white can be very stark when we actually want something softer. So, but um, look, as I mentioned, I began drawing in pen because I wanted to combine it with watercolor on a trip, and I still I haven't yet done the watercolor. I haven't yet um, made myself made myself explore watercolor. So I still want to do that. So I think I'm probably going to keep drawing in in, in ink till I, I finally do that. I was actually thinking I should use some of these drawings that I do. Um, uh, for, for the videos as practice pieces for my watercolor. It's just that they're not done on, they're not drawn on watercolor paper, I suppose. Um, right. Uh, point number five. And, and this, this is a point that I've made in other contexts as well, but I think it has a particular relevance if we're thinking, thinking of switching from pencil to pen. And that's, not to be thinking of lines, but to be thinking of marks. Because I think, see, we can make a lot of marks very easily with pencil. It's very easy with pencil. We, we, we put it on its side. We can shade. We can create value without line. And that in itself means that when we draw with pencil, we're not, we're not so focused on line because there are other options or we can do half line half value we can we can we can flick and get um by changing the pressure as we change direction we can get a lot of variety of effect with graphite but when we go to a pen in some ways there is this great now focus on line because what we do is we draw lines and that's fine um, thanks, Peter. That's fine. But at its worst, though, what it does is it encourages us to, to end up having an emphasis on lines and a cartoon-like look can easily appear rather, rather than a look of more realism, which may well be what we're after. And I think 
part of the problem is as children, we've seen cartoons and we've watched cartoons and cartoons are, and they're often meant to be, and certainly the old ones were, uh, lines. They're, they're outlines of forms and often there's not be, been any attempt to make them three-dimensional. They are just outlines. And so it's easy when we go, and they were drawn with pen. So it's easy when we go to pen to think of outline and just combining lines because it's not immediately obvious how we can go beyond lines with pen as it is with pencil because we can just turn the pencil on the side and and, and shade, create create value. So, um, yeah, you know, we, we have to be really, and again, this comes back to the point, we need to develop a new way of thinking, a new way of drawing when we switch. We're not just changing what's in our hand to where, where the, the strategies we use for drawing are often not going to work at all or not, not work very successfully with ink. And the ones that we need to use, we may have not had any need to even think about when we were drawing with, with pencil. So that's point number five. Point number six um, is simple, and that's simply that drawings, I find, take longer to draw in ink than it would take to draw the same thing in pencil. That with pencil, it is somehow easier to to cover areas more quickly i think because it's softer and and i don't know maybe because you don't need to observe quite so carefully because there is always that that um safety harness of the the eraser to get us out of trouble um but yeah it, it just seems to me that that i can i can cover a sheet of paper with pencil marks a lot quicker than i can with pen and whether that's just yeah um confidence or what I don't know um, and it brings us to number seven which is that that value is very different lights and darks is very different with with graphite we can create value very quickly and we can get an incredible variation and particularly if we uh, are happy enough to use different um, pencils with our with our in the one drawing we could start with a 2b but we could go into 3b 4b 5b 6b if we want really dark areas so so that can be i think a very helpful thing as well but of course with pen we can't do that we we well it depends how we're thinking but initially at least we still only have a line so we that comes down to um, hatching as the most obvious possibility, and hatching is not a straightforward, easy thing. If if I had to say what, what seems to cause the most trouble for people from the sorts of comments I get and from the videos that are watched, look, I'd have to say it's perspective number one and it's hatching number two. I don't know. Tell me, tell me in the chat um, how you feel about hatching. Do you feel really comfortable about hatching, or or is it always this moment of I don't really know what to do, I don't really know where to put the lines. I'm thinking of doing a, a video where um, um, I'm thinking of doing a video where I get um, a line drawing, you know, something something like this, but then I hatch it three different ways. Uh, with lines in different directions, with different principles, and just compare the effect of hatch marks in different different combinations, different directions. Does that sound like an interesting, like an interesting um, video? Um, and of course, on my community page, I could then post the line drawing, so that if people wanted to just start with the line drawing and do the hatching, they could work out which ones they they thought was good. <laughs> love hatching well there's hatching and cross hatching i must admit as much as possible i just hatch so hatching is when you have one set of lines going in one direction sort of they, they can change but they don't cross over they're just lines very close together um cross hatching is where you do a whole lot of lines close together and then you do some more going another direction crossing them it doesn't have to be at 90 degrees the cross but, but they angle across each other. And so, yeah, that's the difference between hatching and cross-hatching. 
Um, yep, there's a few people thinking that sounds like a sounds like a good video. So, um, and, and by hatching, we create a lot of lines close together, which means there's not as much white showing through, and therefore we start to create the effect of value, the effect of just a tonal area that with graphite we could just cover the whole paper quickly if we wanted to with, with a value. We're still having to just draw lines. So therefore it's quite slow uh, depend, and it can be very slow depending on what, what size pen we have. But um, but there are some other options. It's not just, it's not just um, hatching and cross hatching. We, we can use ink and I guess there's two main ways we can use ink. We can use ink from sketch markers, which is what I use. So I have my Copic sketch markers uh, that I like because they're refillable for one reason. And um, and so in, in effect with a pen, we're able to put large area, we're able to put ink not in line but in 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 um oh what's the word I'm looking for just on spread ink on the on the paper in places we wanted. But the other thing we can do is we can just use ink. We we can get ink and dilute it and use it with with a brush, with a paintbrush. And one of the things I first did before I began to use the sketch markers was I did that, I'd get an ice, uh, this is a great little tip actually, I would get um, an ice cream container, an ice, um, ink, uh, ice, ice, ice container with the little whole, little um, little square boxes in it. And I would, I would fill a whole bunch of them with water and then I would basically get my ink and I'd put like one drop of ink in one, two drops of ink in another, you know, five drops in another, 10 in another, and I'd create various dilutions of, of um of of value of darkness and then i would i would use them as if as if it was just watercolor and I, i'd splash them on and i found that that worked quite well and it was a very convenient way to do it and when i finished i just tipped them all out and um rinsed it out um Right, Roxette, um, saying that uh, they're a poster and portrait artist, so they begin with pencil. And, yep, I used to begin my ink drawings with pencil, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, like there's, 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 no, there's no judgment. There's no superiority of this or that. It's, it's just what you want to end up with and the proce process you want to use to end up with it. And I wanted to free myself from from the preoccupation with with erasing lines and having to feel that every line was perfect the moment I placed it on the on the paper and I wanted to combine pen line with um, with watercolor but I haven't done that yet. Um, okay, the eighth point. One of the things that you're going to miss if you're switching from pencil to pen is just the incredible flexibility we get with pencil that comes from pressure. Simply by, by yeah, often intuitively just adjusting the pressure that we're pressing the, the, the nib down, uh, the, the end of the pen down, uh, pencil down onto the paper. We get tremendous um, variation from light to dark and even width as well we can make the line thicker or thinner with the pressure as well as making it lighter or darker. So that's great. But depending a bit on the type of pen you use, but if, if like me, you use a um, just a fine liner, then if you press down, you wreck the nib. I mean, you have a line or you don't have a line, but there isn't that ability to, to create these wonderful just varied marks and lines just, just by adjusting the pressure. Um, no, I've never, I haven't used brush pens, um, Rian, um, and I, I've never used uh, um, dip pens or fountain pens either. I have been thinking it might be nice to use those because you can, with, with um, depending on the nib, you can actually get um, great variety of, of line of thickness by basically I think rotating the pen as you as you move so that can create some I think very interesting marks very 
very visually dramatic marks that if we combine them with the form that we're we're trying to to to, to create uh, can be very impressive um number nine point number nine is and you might disagree but um i think there's a lot more var variation in terms of the result we get um with pens according to what type of pen we use i think with pencil there there's a lot less variation i mean there are some cheaper brands and more expensive brands but but generally generally there's a lot of very good pencils in a very narrow price range that all do pretty much the same thing but with pens i think it does start to get a bit different and it does start to get expensive because pens run out of ink and we can either have disposable pens and throw them away or we can have ones that um, the multi-liners that i use that again can replace the ink cartridge and can replace the, the nibs the, the copic multi-liners that i use um, although i also have some copic disposable ones because they can be handy to have as as backup as well and also because for some reason their 0 0.2 millimeter pen doesn't come as a disposable disposable it only comes in the reusable format so and i like the 0 0.2 i use that a lot 0 0.2 0 0.3 millimeter pens are my workhorses and sometimes i'll get, go down to a, a 0 0.1 for the far distance or i might go up to a 0 0.5 if i want a much heavier effect possibly in the foreground um, but yeah um, but yeah um, with different brands different inks look differently and different pens have different different ways of let, releasing if you like the ink on the paper so so you can have a dip pen which really is just held by by i don't know the surface tension of the ink in the in the little, little hole in the in the nib that's released as you press it um, you can have pens that have bore points that that often produce a very nice lush flow of ink um, you have the, the compressed fiber of the multi-liners that, that I use. And the differences between the different brands, I think, is, is more noticeable. I find that I very quickly had, had if you like, because when I first started, I bought half a dozen brands and just used them all, and I very quickly had favorites. Whereas with the pencils, I could almost buy any brand in the art shop, and I, I really couldn't tell. I mean, I, I, in the end, I had a favorite brand I, I used to use Stadler pencils they're not no one's paying me to say anything about what I use so this is just my experience but I, I did like the the, the Stadler Mars Lumograph pencils but really yeah you know there's not so much difference between a whole lot of them um I found but with pen it, it does it, there's just a lot greater difference so therefore it may be firstly so therefore it is more expensive to draw in ink than to draw in pencil. You may not realize that when you start. And certainly if you want to use sketch markers, they become quite expensive. Again, I use Copic because you can refill them. But, um, and at some point though, you also need to replace the nibs. Um, and, and so it's not, it's not really cheap. There'd be times in my life where that, where the affordability of that would have meant that I perhaps wouldn't have drawn as much as, as I would have liked. So yeah, that's just a consideration on the difference between pen and pencil as well. And well, actually I've just, I, I merged into the 10th point, which is that it is more expensive drawing with pen. And people ask what materials should I draw with? And my answer is always the materials that you can afford to waste, the materials that you can use up without worrying about the expense because so they're the ones that you can you can learn and grow with and if um highly if um if we're worried about what it's costing then we're not free to explore the drawing experience we're not free to experiment and experimenting is so important 
it's it's so important. It's why it's 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 another reason why it's so harmful to have this mindset that when I draw, I'm producing an artwork. You know, if it's a commission for someone and they expect it to look a certain way, then that's different. But if I'm just drawing for pleasure, if I'm drawing for me, then I should be absolutely free to experiment and to try new things and to try different ways from perhaps how I would normally represent something because this is how we learn and grow. It's how we push through. It's how we develop our style. I may not have reached my most mature drawing style yet. Yeah. And if I don't keep exploring the way I make marks on the paper with whatever I have in my hand, then I'm, I'll, I'll never reach, if you like, the most expressive, expressive drawing star, style that I have within me. Um, so, so I think I think that's um, that's important. That's 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 a very significant thing. You know, I, I need to have, and and when I buy supplies, I try and buy as much as I can at once, so that I always have a good stock of whatever it is I'm using on hand, because it's it's not just it's not just that um, whether I can afford it or not, but it's also. Yeah, how easy it is for me to access actually actually getting the stuff. I suppose in this day and age, you know, people order things online and get them delivered. I don't know if people do that without supplies, but um, I'm still used to, you know, going to shops and things. But um, it, it is helpful to, to just make sure that you always have a good stock of whatever it is that, that you're using so that it's – you don't have to – use the pens carefully or the ink carefully or the paper carefully because because you know you've only got three sheets left you know we we in the end the most valuable thing we have is our time so when we have time to draw when we have the mental capacity the headspace to draw when we have the energy and the desire to draw then we want to make sure that we've got pens and paper and pencils whatever it is we're using yeah um so what i'm just looking at the comments um just tried using pen because i said oh well thank you roxette that's 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 very kind of you um uh yeah and and look it's it's interesting it's it's interesting trying to create effect um one of the things that someone just said how many here are archie students for visual technique class i don't know about visual technique class not happy never studied art or let alone been an archie student but um uh, yeah you know sounds interesting um i think the most helpful thing that i do these days is regardless of what i'm drawing with um is that i stop thinking about lines and i think about marks to create an effect because regardless of if it's a photo or something in front of me i can't I can't draw it. Like I can't create what I'm seeing either in the photo or in life. So therefore I'm creating some sort of, and I'll just use the word approximation of it. But I think a far better word than approximation is I'm wanting to create some sort of effect of what it was or what it is that I'm looking at. And that effect is going to convey the qualities of the scene that, that appeal to me that I want to focus on capturing. Um, and, and so, you know, I, and, I, and I think this is something that I came to realise when I was painting uh, before I did the drawing and often painting very large pictures and having to create things without line, without outline, but but often through modelling form, and particularly because I did sort of natural subjects, there weren't a lot of straight lines, if there were any straight lines. So learning to create effect and modelling form, and then when I began to draw, with even with, with, with pen, I found that that was still the strategy, that was still the principle I was trying to do. And if we... If we, if we think of lines, we end up with outline, which does then create almost, almost certainly a cartoon effect because 
cartoons in the sense of children's cartoons. I'm not talking of art, comics and things and, and, and manga and all of that. But I'm talking about the the, the Mickey Mouse sort of cartoons, um, the, the things I read when I was a kid. Then, then they are just outline. They're just very two-dimensional outline. And that's what we want to avoid because when we look at an object in life, the edges, even if there are hard edges around everything that we look at, the edges don't all look the same. Some edges might look very hard and solid and straight and be an edge, but other things, they're not really an edge. They're a surface curving away from us. And the effect of the light creates a different feel to another edge that might be in the shadow that might actually be a corner that we're looking at. Now, how do we reflect that difference using our ink? Whether it's just a pen or whether it's a pen and we're using ink for value as well, we're using washers or we're using markers or or whatever. You know, how, how do we how do we create the effect of what we're seeing? So I shouldn't be thinking of outline. I should be firstly, I think always think of form ahead of shape. So form is three-dimensional, shape is two-dimensional. Always think of form before shape. Shape can be very helpful, and there's there's um there's some particular subjects where I use shape to help me really nail, hopefully, my accuracy. But it's always still more helpful to have considered form first. Um, what's Jessica saying? Uses tiny craft containers to store water down ink in rather than wasting what I don't use. I use ink instead of Copic markers. Yeah, Copics are very expensive. Um, and as I said, I, see, I certainly couldn't have used them if I'd, if I'd started doing this at other stages of my life. But yeah. Um, um, yeah, so I imagine you can put a lid on the the problem with using the ink things is that the the, the, the ice box trays um, ice trays is that you can't cover them and so do need to do need to tip them out at the end. But yeah, that's a good idea to use use containers that 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 can be preserved that have lids on them. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's interesting that I as I mean I really love drawing with with pencil and it was a difficult difficult thing to step away from that and when I first began to draw with ink my initial feeling was that it was a very harsh a very harsh sort of medium it was I guess because it was very black and white but I have I have learned um, since then um, much more subtlety uh, and flexibility with even even black line, even um, yeah, and of course we can also the one thing we can do, whereas we can um, vary our pressure to vary our lines with pencil, we can simply buy a range of different different pen thicknesses in the same brand. It's important um, and in the same color, and rotate those within the one drawing. And if you know my work, then you know that I would do that in more drawings than not. It's since, well, since I've been doing these um, drawing exercise, these daily drawing exercise draw, drawings, I, uh, I use the one pen for all of those. Um, and the two drawings I've held up tonight, I've, I've used the one pen in all of those, but it, it's actually probably more common that I would use two pens at least, if not three, so. Mm. So. That's my 10 points. Where are we? <laughs> um, yeah. So XD, oh, XD, I think that's meant to be a face <laughs> with a smile. <laughs> so does anybody want to ask me, good morning, Ian? Well, we've just finished my 10 points, Ian. So you'll have to watch watch this um, back if uh, you want to hear what they are. But does anyone have any questions? or comments, how many people are doing some of the daily drawing exercises? Are you finding them helpful? Anyone listening uh, now doing those? Um, do you find them interesting subjects, useful subjects? Any suggestions of videos that you don't think I've made that you'd like to have me made? Have me make? Um, yes, it has to be about drawing. I don't, I don't make any videos about other things. <laughs> um, 
it just just if you go to my channel on the content, um, I've um, they've all got on the thumbnail daily drawing exercise number. Well, I think it was number sixty three this morning. So there's sixty three of them um, at least. So you've got a couple of months of daily drawing exercises, and they're about 12, 13, 14 minutes sort of max each. Um, some of them are in real time. Some of them are only very slightly sped up. So, um, yeah. So, but yeah, if you just go to my channel and to the content and just under videos, you'll see them. So, um, and then there are ones that don't have the daily drawing exercise on them, which generally are longer and have have a particular theme. But the daily drawing exercise ones there. More just a range of different things, but mind you, when I do the voiceover, if if I can think of something particular to say I, about them, I do. If I can have a focus on the on the drawing, um, I enjoy drawing the cow the cow skull um, during the week. That was a, a different subject. Um, a video on doing glass. Oh yes, yeah. Uh, there, there's a reason why I haven't done that, Jessica. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not magic. I just. I can't just do things. I do need to have to have done them, and and I really don't have experience in in um, in drawing with glass, with ink, with line. Um, uh, I, I find it that's easier with paint than with line. Uh, not that I've painted for a while, but um, not drawing, but all getting use of all the ideas draw to. Palm trees, draw two. Is that palm trees? Um, Bristly less. Uh, no, look, Peter. I don't like to. I tell you what. I'll just run through the ten points now. I don't. I don't. Don't like to list the points of my videos in bullet form because then, then no one has to watch the video, and that's a bit counterproductive for me. Um, so the the ten the ten tips are, firstly. Don't make the mistake of thinking that there's a natural transition from drawing with pencil to drawing with pen. They're two totally different means of drawing and they each have strengths and weaknesses. They perhaps each have starting points and advance points. It's it's not like pencil is, is training wheels for, for drawing with pen. Um, no, if, if, we, if, we've, if we've drawn with pencil and we want to draw with pen, then we need to put the pencil down and understand that we're learning a new medium and it's all the rules are different um, and it's not just that we can't erase. Um, so the second point was to expect, um, expect that we're going to need to develop a different drawing style because the effects that we create with the, um, with the pen are going to be so different to the effects that we create with the, um, with the graphite. Um, yeah, that that the big deal of switching obviously is that we can't erase pen, and therefore be prepared to have to deal with that. And that can be a big deal, particularly if we're perfectionistic. Uh, the thought that I can't, I can't, I can't get rid of mistakes. Expect to have have to develop um, a new, a, a probably a healthier mindset to lines and marks that don't quite go in the, the place we would have liked to them to at the start, but to learn to uh, accept and work things that aren't quite right into the drawing. And, and, and I think come to understand that by the end of the drawing, we often can't see these things at all, um, at all. And so not to be so worried, unless we make a terrible mistake very early in the drawing that's really significant before we kind of got into the headspace, just, just leave it and deal with it as best as we can. Um, the, the point four was that um, drawing in ink is very, it's, it's, it's very confronting in that it's, there's black and white and there's, there's no gray. Um, uh, not if you're just drawing with a pen and yeah whereas um, with pencil there is that variation um, point number five is that it's it's I think depending whatever we use it's unhelpful to 
to think of drawing lines. Instead, it's much more helpful to think of making marks and creating effects. When we draw lines, if we, we have an emphasis of lines in our thinking, then we often end up just doing outlines and creating very flat, two-dimensional, cartoon-like um, images. If we're thinking of marks, yeah, there's a whole lot more possibility with the effects we're going to create. Um, so, um, and, and avoiding rushing towards outline. And that's the thing, yeah, that's the thing I've really learned lately is I draw lines not nearly as much, nearly as quickly. And I make marks, dots and dashes, and it gives me time to start to create um, smaller sections all at the same time that have some accuracy of proportion. Whereas just drawing lots of lines at the start often commits me in ways that aren't helpful for the overall for the overall effects that I'm wanting to create. Point number six, um, it just takes longer, I find, to draw with pen than to draw with pencil. With graphite, we can cover large amounts quite quickly, um, I think particularly because we can turn the pencil on the side and we can shade and, and splash value everywhere. Um, and I think possibly, too, we can go a little bit faster simply because we know we can erase something that's that's not quite in the right place, whereas ink doesn't allow for any of that. And, and a pencil does wear down. I mean, I was talking earlier about that, that for me, draw, drawings develop their rhythm, their tempo, um, their, their kind of the, the way the speed goes from start to finish. And... Um, and part of that with pencil is that the pencil wears down. And as the pencil wears down, we have a couple of choices. We can, you know, get our sharpener or knife and just make, take it back to where it was at the start. Or we can, we can use the fact that we can now turn it onto its edge and get a very sharp, dark line, almost like an ink line. Or we can use the... the the, the, the sort of fatter end of the pencil now to not have it on its side, but still to create and to use wider lines than we've been drawing with. And so I find that a really interesting, um, uh, I mean, I found when I was drawing, I, I would tend to let the pencil wear down and kind of incorporate that to get more varied marks in my drawing. But when I was drawing the more finely detailed architectural work with pencil, then I would use a mechanical pencil, which is another pencil option, to keep my line thickness the same without having to um, keep um, keep changing it. Bye-bye, um, Tate. Um, thanks, David. I do always try and be practical in, in what I say. Oh, Roxette, I, I hope I... Put you in the mood to draw. I, I think one of one really important discipline, if we want to improve our drawing, regardless of what we draw, is to sit down and say, "I'm going to start. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to sit down and start drawing for five minutes. And if I if it doesn't st start to kind of like flow, I'll stop. Because I I invariably find that because I mean because I'm making these videos in some ways. It makes me draw whether I feel like it or not. It becomes a bit like work. You know, this is what I'm doing. I have to make a video now. I'd, I'd never ask myself, do I feel like drawing? I ask myself, what will I draw? And I find a subject. But I don't give myself the 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 out. You know, I need to draw now. It's, it's time for me to do a video. I have to draw. But, it, you know, I still I end up really enjoying the drawing once I start. So, so I think it's a helpful mindset if we if we're really wanting to sort of fast track our improvement, not by rushing our drawings, but by drawing more frequently. Then it's you know I think we should say, look, I'm just going to start, and if I don't like it, I'll stop. And uh, I bet you you'll almost never stop. That's that's my suggestion. Um, but yeah, it takes longer generally um, with pen. Uh, point seven. 
value creating sort of tonal areas of light and dark is more challenging with ink, I think, than with graphite. We can't just put the pencil on the side and go like that. Um, and it, and it really brings up the, the, the terrible subject of hatching and cross-hatching, which ends up, I think, being a fairly challenging uh, part of drawing with, with pen. And as I said earlier, in my experience, in my experience um, uh, only, pers only perspective causes more problems than hatching for people. And, um, and, and I would agree with that just from when I look through lots of drawings and different drawings that people do. I would say that the hatching is often the weakest part after after perspective. So, um, when we draw with pen, there's there's less flexibility with line pressure, um, and certainly with lots of multi, well, with multi liners. If if you try and press harder as you draw with them, um, you just ruin the nib. You you can you can draw lighter with them to get a bit of a finer effect but it's harder to 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 kind of achieve that um, um my ninth point was that there's more um i think with pen there's more variation in different brands and price ranges for what you get than with pencil i think with pencil we can get a uh, much um uh, uh yeah a more similar result with a larger range of products, pencils, or within a fairly tight price range. Whereas with, with pens, I think the difference between cheapest pens and more expensive pens, I think, is more noticeable. But also the price difference is greater as well. So, And, and then, of course, if we want to do tone and we don't want to do hatching and we want to use value with with inks or sketch markers then that becomes more expensive again on top of what we use to create our more linear marks um and that was the 10th point actually that drawing with pen is more expensive than drawing with pencil we can we can most of us could draw in pencil without leaving home we find some paper we can find a pencil somewhere Whereas, um, yeah, unless we want to draw a ballpoint pen, and lots of people do, and if that's the best option for you, then go for it. If that's the most accessible, affordable thing, then, then you know, develop develop your skills and go for it. So, yeah. So, but it is interesting. Um, sometimes I do, do compare where I did do... Um, a pencil drawing and a pen drawing of the same subject. I, I started by saying that when I first began to draw um, in pen, I was still very limited in my in my subject matter, my references, and so I would often draw in pen the same from the same photos that I had that I'd already drawn in pencil. And so it was always interesting to compare the different effects. And some of them I felt worked better in pencil, and some of them I felt worked better in in pen um it's just the way it was um so yeah yeah so so whatever whichever you use and enjoy i imagine probably most people watching my videos do draw in pen because that's that's what the content is but a lot of the skills and the mindsets and the ways of thinking we talk about applies to to everything um 3 30 a.m in california good grief peter <laughs> what are you doing i hope you're not i i don't know working heavy machinery in the morning <laughs> thanks for thanks for joining us all right is is there any final question before we wrap this up um because i'm pretty tired tonight it's been a big weekend we had a combined 50th birthday party for some friends last night and uh yeah still feeling it today any other questions if not if you haven't hit the like button and you're still hanging in here one of these 20 people please do um oh hi berylina look i'm just saying goodbye um but yeah i even tonight even held up berlin cathedral 
7.39 a.m. in New Brunswick. So you have your Sunday stretched out before you, Ian. Uh, just as but mine closes in behind me as I go to bed. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, yeah. All right. Well, look, thanks, everyone. Um, and uh, I am going to try and do a, um, a live demo drawing once a week as well, although I'm I'm planning to do that in the morning because I think that's going to be uh, a little friendlier for the US, yeah. which I think um, tends to get the, 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 well, as we say in Australia, the, the, the pointy end of the pineapple <laughs> with, with a, with a, with a nighttime. So uh, nighttime Australia video. Well, thanks everyone. I'll, um, I'll see you next time, but, you know, whatever you do, whatever you, whatever you're drawing, however you're drawing it, and whether it's in pencil or pen, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.